Mature Health welcomes you to the Menopause Dialogue. The Menopause Dialogue. Hashtag you and me. Sharing, living, loving freely. Hi, I'm Hi, and welcome to Menopause and Dialogue. I know, right? I'm excited. <laughs> this is a year long dialogue where we embark on the journey, the total journey of women from start to finish. And Patricia and I, our mission is to empower you, also to educate you, um, and even inspire you as well. And as we provide the tools to help you to hashtag you and me to understand as well as to take charge of this menopausal journey. We are going to be streaming live twice monthly on the second and fourth Monday of every month at 6 p.m. So sister, I know you have a sister or two in your life between the late 30s to the mid 60s who could use this information as we go on this journey with you so share the link share the story call somebody up and tell them menopause dialogue is here finally we have been planning this for a very long time and you know what we are so glad you're here Jay, my wife why men was the dialogue. I know, right? For whatever reason it is, we go to school and we go into our biology class. We are taught about the woman's menstrual cycle. We're taught about reproduction. But for some reason, menopause is not on the curriculum. And menopause is a natural phenomenon in a woman's life. Also, as women, it's not something we're talking about. And even the older women, I'm not telling the younger women, but when you get to the age of 40, there's some stuff that's going to be happening in your life. And I know as for me, my mom and her, didn't tell me or prepare me for that stage. And this is such a real experience in the life of a woman. So one of the things that I want to do, and I made up my mind for was that I wanted to help women because menopause hit me like a tsunami. I was not prepared. I couldn't sleep. I was putting on weight. When it started, I, I literally went through a phase where I wasn't sleeping. Then for six weeks, I had under one hour of sleep every night, which began to affect my brain. Then I had three days, three nights on that six week of not a week of sleep. And nobody was able to tell me what was going on. And when I learned what was going on with me, that I was perimenopausal, I began a journey. And by the way, <laughs> she helped me to understand what was going on with me. I called Shane around three something in the morning. Hey, hey. Yes. I thought I was dead. I thought I was having a heart attack and I was alone and afraid. Yeah. And it was shameful for me to understand and accept that I was perimenopausal. I know, right? And for me, now here's the thing. <laughs> I saw perimenopause was for all women. <laughs> and so I couldn't see you align yourself. No. <laughs> but I, that morning, I had to accept the fact that I was perimenopausal. Yeah, I know. It's and then I went on journey of learning. I went to a group of women, about 50 or 60 ladies, my age. And I told them about my experience and I wanted to know if the same thing that was happening to me was happening to them. And 
everybody started talking about the experience. And then I was like, well, why aren't we talking? Why aren't women, why aren't older women saying to younger women, hey, this is about to happen. Mm -hmm. And so it made me determine that, listen, I am going to take the good news of the gospel <laughs> of menopause out to the world. What about you, Shane? I love your why. You know what I mean? My why is a little bit different mm -hmm. though, because I watched my mom go through these menopausal symptoms. And my mom, she was having, she saw what was a heart attack. And um, I remember going from doctors. Uh, I remember my sister and I was just trying to figure out. We thought our mom was losing it. And so it took about, it took about a year. And so we watched our mom go through these um, unpleasant experiences. Um, for the most part, she was dealing with heart palpitations. And so every night when she went to bed, we prayed because we thought she was going to die of a heart attack. And so the thing is, she was so undiagnosed. Um, well, not so really, I guess it was about a year for treatment. Um, she was finally diagnosed with perimenopause. And watching my mom go through that journey made me want to share that experience as often as I have an opportunity to. And so whenever, just like you, whenever I see and you just happen to have that same experience, I find myself right away going over to the female and saying, um, I think you may be going through perimenopause. So my mom really is my why today for this. She really mm -hmm. is. And thank God this experience is what brought us here to menopause the dialogue. And ladies, remember, now, this is a dialogue between you and me, hashtag you and me. Right. <laughs> and so if you have a question, if you have a comment, feel free to share. We're going to be talking. So let's, let's talk. Let's talk about your experiences. And one of the things, Shay, that I have been hearing women say is that they are experiencing an imbalance in their body. Um, they feel like they're going crazy. Mm -hmm. And I can I, I can identify with that because when I was dealing with first went into perimenopause, going to doctors and nobody could help me. Mm -hmm. They were looking at me like I was crazy. And I know I wasn't crazy. Something was going on with my body. I wasn't sleeping. I was putting on weight. Um, I, I, I just didn't know what was going on. And one of the things that many women say is the same story. They don't understand what's mm -hmm. going on. So we're going to start at the very beginning. And now, ladies, we have a fishbowl here. <laughs> all of our fish we can dig up and back so that we can go through every topic and the points on each topic. Now, today, we are going to be diving into perimenopause. Mm -hmm and what that is. But before we do, I'm going to grab the first question. And Patricia, before you even get that question, Nadine is joining us from YouTube. Hi, Nadine. Nadine Hi, says, Nadine. sounds familiar. Mm -hmm. The last sleeping thing. Yes, Nadine, you understand. Oh, yes. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us, Nadine, and we appreciate you. So, Patricia, what are your ask question? question. <laughs> before we go into perimenopause, is what are hormones? Good question. We use we use this word all the time. Oh my goodness! But I ask the women on this chat today, what are hormones? What would be your response? Yeah, I know. The thing is, Patrice, when we think about hormones, first of all, it, it mainly occurs um, in the ovaries of females. That's one thing. And um, estrogen and progesterone are the main sex hormones and these hormones can actually influence things like our hair growth mm. it can definitely influence weight and it also influences things like muscle growth as well as our bone growth yes. and so when we have a uh, what do you would call it like a decline uh, a lowering level of uh, estrogen this is actually the onset of um, perimenopause yes and one of the things how I like to describe hormones in my mind, right. I'm very crisp in my okay. mind. For me, hormones are those chemicals that go through the body and they're like oxygen women. Ah. 
And I like when they go through the body, they release into the bloodstream. And as they go through the bloodstream, they go through the entire body. So they affect the entire body. Mm -hmm. And as they affect the entire body, we respond, whether up or down. Mm -hmm. And when these messengers said, are we going to be a cell that gossip? Do you realize that? Yeah. Our cell gossip. Mm -hmm. So I cell can tell the news <laughs> of what these hormones that are sent through our body mm -hmm. in small doses. And when our cells do that, our body responds. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I learned about hormones is that they're responsible for energy, mm -hmm. they're responsible for our metabolism, because when I didn't understand about the weight thing, the weight gain thing, oh my goodness. Listen I me. needed I needed someone to help me understand. I had an experience and I shared this with Shay. In one week, I weighed myself on a month. Oh. And I was uncertain. At the end of the week, seven days, I was ten pounds more. And I was some kind of mojo was going on here. Yeah, I don't understand it. But let me tell you, when women say that, you hear them say it all the time, they say things like, it's difficult for me to lose weight now, or I find it so hard now to lose weight. But that all ties in to the decline in estrogen, which is a family of hormones. Right, because the hormones, when we have these, and one of the things that happen with our hormones in our body, and especially for some women with a um, estrogen, we have peaks mm. and then we have valleys. Then it decides to go halfway up, and then the progesterone itself just goes on the decline. And as our hormones move up and down, it causes even our weight and our moods to fluctuate. Mm, yeah. There's a lot of fluctuation going on. The fact of the matter is, when we have this decline that leads into perimenopause, we're not quite sure exactly how our bodies can respond because these hormones are really responsible for like managing how we feel, how we look, how we grow, how we move. And so it's like your management system of the whole week off. That's what's happening. Ah, oh, look at that. Thank you for joining us. Patricia. Patricia Mungo said hello. Hi, Patricia. Hello. How are you? Thank you so much for joining us. And Rosalie. Hi, Rosalie Thompson. Thank you for joining us too. Today, y'all, the truth and I, we started from the top, perimenopause. <laughs> and the next question out of our fishbowl shape, what is perimenopause? Yes, the topic of the day. Bum, 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 bum. There yeah. we go. <laughs> Simply, it is the beginning of the onset of a decline in estrogen. And what that means is, we start to experience it. We start to experience like this fluctuation, this uh, um, feeling of not really understanding how we feel. And so perimenopause is just the onset. It's the beginning of the decline in these hormones. But sometimes we refer to it as hormone imbalances, or we say, I'm feeling funny. You know, we can change our life. Yeah, yeah. And it really is because it is transition period from mm -hmm. a woman having her normal periods until the end. And the perimenopause can stretch for some women between eight to ten years. Mm -hmm. I can I think we just look completely different from each woman. So sometimes we make a mistake that um if sister A has so and so she is going to perimenopause, but I'm not going to Pause. Mm -hmm. Ladies, let's put it out right here, right now. When those hormones ever start to decline, whether you recognize the system or not, we are all going to prepare menopause. Sometimes I'm sitting around the table with other women and they say things like, Me? I'm not going to prepare menopause. Mm -hmm. And I want to hit them on the elbow like this. Yes, you are. <laughs> perimenopause actually for the average woman begins at about 40, 41. Now we have some women, they mm -hmm. begin during uh, during the late 30, yeah. the late 30. And actually there are 66 symptoms mm -hmm. of perimenopause yeah. in women. So it looks different on every woman. Mm -hmm. I know for me, 
with the beginning of perimenopause. Um, it began with sleep, the weight, and then um, I started to deal with um, thyroid. I, I, when I began to see swelling, I learned what to do. And I, I had my perimenopause really began because I was dealing with a lot of anxiety. I like how you say my perimenopause. <laughs> I have a, this is a natural process. It is. I it is. initially said I didn't want to go into the Yeah, I remember. And I was thinking that he told me that this was supposed to be a natural process. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was like, not me. Yeah. I remember my girlfriend saying to me, Jay, I don't care about you. And I said, listen, when no attention and I will start to decline, I promise you. You are just Gigi. Gigi says Gigi Maki is joining us. She says, LOL. <laughs> Menopause, not for me. I hear you, Gigi, mm -hmm. but all we're saying mm -hmm. tonight, <laughs> we're saying embrace the journey because this it's is why, natural. It's natural. Mm -hmm. this is why, as sisters, we are sharing because it's so important for us to talk about all of these little symptoms that we may find as taboo. Um, mm -hmm. And we don't really want to share because menopause is it's inevitable and it's going to happen. We're here help you to just kind of figure out some of those things, recognize that the journey could look very different for each woman. And the fact of the matter is, you know, if I got hot flashes, if you got palpitations, we are all going through perimenopause. I actually even had a friend, she had just turned 34 and she started experiencing symptoms of perimenopause. And so when you look at um, perimenopause as a whole, you may not even be sure um, that you are actually experiencing it because sometimes we tend to look at the age. But what I found just recently, Patrice, particularly that, you know how now you find a lot more women are dying younger? You have a lot more women that are being diagnosed with perimenopause a lot younger. So even though, you know, research in this says like 40, we find now in the early in some cases, and everybody is different. And we're gonna we're gonna talk about the symptoms and what to look for that helps you to understand that you have entered into perimenopause. But on the box, it's at about 40, 41 we start. It, it's um, eight to ten year journey. I did not know I was in perimenopause until my eighth year. And Perimenopause actually is the time when our eggs, the last of the eggs that we came to this earth with, are diminishing. We are using the last of them. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then that's what we experience these um, hormonal imbalances, um, the estrogen going up and sometimes down. And because we experience these peaks with our hormones, then, of course, these symptoms come, um, then these symptoms are what we have to deal with. And then that leads us to the next question. <laughs> and the question is, what could these changes look like for women? Oh, boy. Let me tell you. Mm. Grace, first, let's do this. When we talk about perimenopause in particular, mm -hmm. the symptoms almost always start with a change in the menstrual cycle. That's always where it starts. Mm -hmm. And those changes can actually go from the length of the menstrual cycle. You remember the day, like, wait a minute. You feel like my period starts then. You know, like mm -hmm. it's not it, yeah. it's just gone. Yes. Not there is, if you're saying that, if you're saying that to yourself, mm -hmm. wait a minute, I think my period just was over and start again. These are the onset signs of perimenopause. Then, as, as it's sometimes it's longer, right? I exactly. went for three days, all my life, five and six days. Yeah, it's, it's just changes, and, and the changes again can look different. And there's another sign. Let's just say that you are used to having your own menstrual cycle, whether it changes from three to five days. You actually have a period where you miss it for a month. Remember when you missed yours for two months and it came back? I did. <laughs> Perimenopause also takes you on a journey. Oh my goodness. Because my thing has been, you know what, I can't wait to stop having periods. Right. Periods have not been my best friend during my life. I know. So I, 
then I finally accepted that, okay, I'm perimenopausal. Okay. This means, the good thing for me was that my periods were going to end, okay? So the first time I missed a period, I was like, hey, hey. And two months came, hey, hey. And two months came, hey, hey. I'm finished. And it came. Uh-oh. I promise you, I was upset with the Lord. And I was and I was upset. I really was upset because I was looking for throwing away all paths. I was finished. Yeah, it's kind of funny, right? Because when we were younger and we missed a period, we automatically thought, wait, I was right? Wow. Wow. We are like celebrating the fact that we're finished. Man. Right. Yes. And mine happened. That happened to me like three times right. where I missed like two and three months. Yes. And so the last time we missed the, the three months, I was like, you know what? Yeah. Whatever. You, you know what I mean? No. And one of the trees is, is actually one of the main points when it comes to perimenopause. When you have the beginning of the menstrual cycle, that has to be persistent. So it's going to happen for a couple of times pretty much mm-hmm. until you ask for as long as a year and then we go to the next stage mm. that we were talking about no. we were talking about a big M word but today we are talking perimenopause now please you know another thing when we talk about symptoms and this right here ladies I, I really got, I really want you guys to be um cognizant of this because this is one of those um symptoms that actually goes under the radar and we don't liken it to perimenopause and those levels of estrogen and progesterone being lowered. Um, feeling irritable. Mm. Let me say it to you guys. We all have it. I have, I, I now have this thing that I do. I call it a 24 hour clock. If I'm starting to feel irritable, mm. I pull back and I recognize, Shay, you are having a moment. Mm-hmm. Get away from those people because they don't have nothing to do with this. Because the, let me tell you, the fact of the matter is, we as men for the women, right? We get a bad rap because we they think that we control how we feel, but we're not we can't really control it. However, we can be aware and make and make an adjustment. And here's the science behind that because you know what? I am guilty of a lot. <laughs> I used to say women who were pregnant. Yes. I, oh my God. That, I used to say carrying on I'm like that's the Exaggeration. Mm. And one of the things, I, let me tell you something, it comes back. Yeah, it comes, it, back. It comes back. Like a ton of work. I think you understand. Yeah. Like what I understand about perimenopause and why our moods fluctuate is because these hormones that we talk about, these hormones affect the chemical um, that is produced in the brain because of the fluctuation and it produces the serotonin. So, you know, one minute you can be mm-hmm. anxious, one minute you can cry. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I learned and understand now in retrospect, when I began perimenopause, mm-hmm. I was also dealing with a lot, a lot of stress mm-hmm. in my home, pressure on the job, dealing with all that was going on in my body and I didn't understand what was going right. on. Mm-hmm. And so not understanding the emotional aspect yeah. of it was big for me. So I'm saying to you ladies, it's real. It is. It is so real. So when I went to my school group, it was a class of 85. Maybe I should say that. Oh, you did already. <laughs> 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 when I went into the and I told them what was going on, at the end of it, one of the one of the ladies said to me, "So that's why I'm so irritable." And it was only because of group. It was about fifty, sixty ladies in that. Mm-hmm. And so when everyone started talking about their experience, mm-hmm. and you were like, "Oh, this happened again. So I'm not alone. I'm not crazy." And mm-hmm. you're talking about irritability. Mood swing, you know, hot flashes, night, um, night sweat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever. We do know it. We, let me tell you another thing. When you look at perimenopause, particularly because this is the onset, sometimes women, they definitely, because we 
kind of the estrogen. It's like having those managers at work and all of a sudden they're taking off and so no one's there to manage. Mm -hmm. There's there mm -hmm. that where everybody's just ran away, you know? There's also the ability to start to feel anxious, like just for no reason. Like yes. you're in a conversation and you feel anxious or you feel nervous. You're wondering like, why am I feeling nervous? Yeah. Like what's happening? All of these are considered normal because of the decline in your estrogen levels. And these are all a part of your sex hormones. Look who we got, Avico in the house. And hey, Ella, is I'm from Avico. Hi, Penelope. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you. Remember, this dialogue is all sisters sharing because you and I know all too well how important it is to share because the fact of the matter is, are not alone, and that's why our hashtag is you and me. We're not alone. When we think about the symptoms again, uh, when we tie it into irritability, we tie it into being a little anxious. Also, there's another symptom sometimes we don't um, tend to look at it often, and it is unexplained mood signs. You don't know why. You're just feeling like you want to cry mm -hmm. or dive into ice cream. You know what I mean? Like, you're not sure what you're feeling and why you're feeling it. Let me say this to you. You're okay. You're really okay? You're normal. You're normal. This is all the time. Your manager's being off the work. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. And it is natural. It is a natural process. The thing is, you and I are here to help you to understand this journey. We give you the practical tools that you actually need to help you because I can tell you when it came to this journey, listen, your girl got to buy a good news. <laughs> I, listen, your girl got to buy a good news because it's important that you kind of know how to help yourself. Yes. So the thing is, we don't just want to give you information. We want to help you with tools to help you to empower yourself and to help you embrace this journey because menopause is one of those things that when you talk to men, they they talk about, oh, they go into and you know what? We got a whole other show for you. I'm not saying that. You know, my producer is in his head. You know, we love him. He's learning some stuff. There you go. He's learning some stuff. The thing is, men often, and this is why we are asking for men to share with us as well, because men really need to know that this experience is real for women. They're not faking. They can't even help the experience, but the more they become aware, or tools we give them, the more yeah. things that they can do, the more quick. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and there are a couple of the, um, symptoms that come to mind low se se sexual drive, <laughs> dry skin. Then um, a lot of women don't have any energy, they're fatigued, um, and then even uh, the vaginal wall is dry as well. There's mm -hmm. so many symptoms. And, Sometimes we don't want to talk about them, yeah. but they are real for us. And another yeah. one that I've been able to put two and two together for me is memory yes. lapses. Memory lapses. Now, that there is real. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, and that is, when you started talking earlier about so much symptoms, the fact is there are a lot of symptoms. However, the symptoms are progressive. And sometimes when you start perimenopause, you may start to just start with the experience like the irritability, the unexplained mood swings, yes. um, mm -hmm. and the fluctuation, fluctuation mm -hmm. in your menstrual cycle. And sometimes you may be one of the females that don't get any symptoms, um, what we are accustomed to. Mm -hmm. However, you, when it comes to perimenopause, it's like a journey, and you just want to take it really, really slowly because the symptoms that we're going to talk about today, that we are talking about today, is just how you begin that journey of perimenopause because this is a yellow dialogue. And so we're going to dive in more um, as we talk about um, menopause and the journey. But we want to get you guys started just talking about perimenopause and some of the things that you could look for in the beginning because these signs, they go under the radar, particularly the mood swings and, you know, just feeling irritable for no reason. And their memory lapse might not have to be the other thing. I mean, you have to remember when you say. And I said to him, you better remember when you're with the uh -huh. <laughs> You know what? And women, it's real. It's all just accepted. You know, when it's happening, here's what happened. 
I remember talking and it's like it's just box space where I have to grab the next and right. like it's, it's like not, I what's, happening? <laughs> what, what's happening? And that is so real. My my yeah. other hat. <laughs> when we are having a conversation and sometimes I realize it happens and and he would say, well, just say what's on your mind. And when we stop, it's not that I'm trying to, um, I, I, I don't, some, I don't know. I it, remember. Like I'm, trying to, yeah, I'm trying to remember, but it's really, and I, it's like a box uh-huh. of emptiness. So memory loss. Mm-hmm. And so you're trying to grab, yeah. it, mm-hmm. grab it. And that is it's real. When right? it comes to menopause, um, perimenopause, some women experience Point issues. Um, um, I've heard some women talk about that. So the experience is so vast, mm-hmm. and, and yes, and it looks different on every woman. And ladies, I just want to remind you right now: share, share, share. What we want to do is we want to change this menopause dialogue. What the narrative has been. We have been sharing. Scripture tells us that the older women ought to be you know, telling, teaching the younger woman. Absolutely. And we have that is not what's been happening. That's why we can hit 40 and go into menopause and it hits perimenopause rather. And it hits us like a ton of bricks. Mm-hmm. And so we have got to change what this dialogue looks like. And we begin here. Yeah. We talk, we exchange, we support each other. And then you find your 30 something year old women in your yes. family. Share. You work with her. Share. share this video. Share it on Facebook. Share it on WhatsApp. Share. Share on the various social media platforms because we need to help a sister out. I know. And Rosemary. Hello, cuz. Dad, I hate them. I hate them. Me and you both. Hashtag you and me. Yes, ladies. True. Listen, share this stuff because this your long dialogue is going to be the place where we talk openly about what we're experiencing personally as well as you. Because the fact of the matter is, we know for such a long time there haven't been support for you. Yeah, there hasn't been, and so yeah. women don't know. We conducted a survey, and it's continuous. The twenty-five women in the business, yeah. professional women who are etc. etc. And when you ask. What is perimenopause? Women do not know. No. So again, perimenopause is that transitional period when a woman starts a period. I'm sorry, for it begins where she has normal period to when it ends. It's that transitional state. Mm-hmm. Ladies, we're gonna take a break and be right back. More than 50% of mature adults living in the Bahamas and the Caribbean show visible signs of photo aging due to sun exposure. Nowadays, in addition to the sun, there are other factors that can contribute to old looking skin, such as bad Bahamian average diet, constant stress, excessive alcohol consumption, not enough sleep, and yes, even smoking. If you truly want to look significantly younger and more attractive, one must take a holistic approach along with a daily skincare restorative routine. With that said, do you want amazing, super soft, tight looking skin, revitalizing your uneven skin tone and dull complexion? Well, this already like superfood now has a new look for inside and outside. It's Seamoss Chill. So whether you are a mature woman or man, say hello to your skin's new best friend. Glowing Skin Seamoss Gel Facial Mask. Available now. Do you know what you are putting on your skin? 93% of wrinkle creams and body lotions contain dangerous ingredients. Some cause more damage than good. Many skincare ingredients can actually cause more wrinkles on your face and body. Look at your labels. Can't pronounce the ingredients? Join the club. More than 85 of the most common skincare ingredients in North America are either banned or on the blacklist in Europe. Ever wonder why some European brands are so much more expensive? Many of them use natural ingredients instead of cheap chemicals. Ingredients that feed your skin instead of aging your skin. 
There is one brand that has gained attention because it uses a centuries-old blend. A blend that has been used since the time of Cleopatra. A Mediterranean blend used to keep her face and body looking much younger and beautiful. The same time-tested blend is now available to you. It's called Pure Garden Serum. This 100% organic serum is a sophisticated blend of organic plants and gentle oils like organic almond seed, organic sesame seed oil, organic calendula, and many other organic plants and essential oils designed to target the signs of aging, along with a highly concentrated blend of organic plant stem cells from widely studied clinically proven Arnica plant. When you have the right type of plant stem cells, they can help boost your skin cells to reduce the appearance of deep wrinkles, fine lines, age spots, and even skin discoloration. On Chaga and Gano are medicinal mushrooms. They've been used in traditional Chinese and Japanese and Korean medicine for thousands of years. The Canadians and the Russians, they especially use the Chaga in their medicine for cancer. Chaga and Gano are what scientists call adaptogenic herbs. Adaptogenic herbs are anything God has created that when you put it in your body, it does more than one thing. Whatever's too high in the body, pressure, cholesterol, sugar, your immune system is going to bring it down to where it needs to be. Whatever's too low is going to bring it up to where it needs to be. Chaga and Gana literally creates balance in the body. They clean and nourish the blood. They eliminate parasites out of the body. They help with vision, memory, and concentration issues. We have lots of people, Chaga and Gano helps to sleep. If you have issues and you get up in the morning and you're always tired, Chaga and Gano will give you energy on a daily basis. If you're constipated, you'll get cleared up. If you have circulation issues, we've seen persons with respiratory issues healed. We've seen persons with tumors healed, open wounds that have been open for months at a time. Chaga and Gano has closed. Chaga and Gano again creates balance in the body. It acts as a tonic for the organs, the liver, the kidney, the nervous system, the heart, keeps the walls of the arteries clean. Chaga and Gano is very much like a one-stop shop for the body. We've had persons with arthritis pain and inflammation tell me they don't have those pains anymore. They're walking when they couldn't walk, now they go for walks, all using the Chaga and the Gano. Welcome back. We show hope that so far menopause dialogue has been helping you. If it has been, just type in SS Sister Share. And I want to say hello, Omni from Unique Beauty Salon, Beauty and Nail Salon. Let me get that right. <laughs> Ladies, we appreciate you and we hope that you are enjoying and learning something. We as women have to come together as sisters. Mm -hmm. And again, the older women, we have got to now change the narrative. We have got to tell the younger women coming up what to expect. Perimenopause is not a secret. And we want to invite all of you women who have businesses to partner with us. If you want to advertise on our show, if you feel the women have of our women, then give us a call. 439-3242. That number again is 439-3242. And now, Shay, back to the fish bowl. Well, let me see. Hold on. Olivia Wells is saying good afternoon, everyone. Hi, Pastor Olivia Wells. Thank you so much for joining us. That's my girl. I appreciate you. And Rosemary B, Gigi Maki. These ladies are sharing. Y'all don't forget hashtag you and me and sisters share. <laughs> Listen, let's share. share, share, share. share. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the fourth question. So what can we do when we start these symptoms? Mm. That's experience these yes. symptoms. Mm. What can we do when we start these symptoms? Well, we talked about perimenopause. The onset of the symptoms. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is this when you are thinking of perimenopause, where the estrogen level starts to decline, you are at the door. And so there are sometimes really simple 
innovative things you can do uh, that can actually make a huge difference. Yes. Now, first, let me say this. When you're dealing with any, any, any therapy or anything that you're doing for perimenopause, it's not like taking a pill. Don't go ahead and do it. And call me up and say, hey, I did it. And I still have to do it before. <laughs> Listen, ladies, perimenopause is a natural part of the process. It's here to stay. Mm -hmm. this, this whole dialogue is just to get you to understand how you can really educate um, and help yourself on the journey of perimenopause because the level of estrogen is going to decline. Mm -hmm. So I can tell you one of the first things um, that you want to get back into is taking warm baths. I know simply just warm baths. Yes. Find time to so is it matter of fact, Olivia? I come over the um, yeah jacuzzi uh, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Taking warm baths. It, it sounds simple, right? But at the end of the day, you're feeling some of the things we talked about, the mood swings, feeling a little bit irritable, um, feeling just a little bit unexplained moods, you know. Um, go ahead and take yourself a warm bath. And what you want to add to that bath is a little bit of good old fashioned yeah. Epsom salt. Epsom salt. It works, honey. Take yourself a bath. And give yourself the opportunity to just relax. Let the water be warm and add in the extra minerals in the form of that and salt. What do you think about that? Yeah, that's a good one. There's so, in fact, you know what, ladies? There's so many therapies that you can do. Now, Shay and I, we believe that doing things the natural way. Oh, yeah. I do everything the natural way because yeah. I understand that perimenopause is a natural journey. Now, there are things you can do to help the element. Ease your symptoms. Yeah, because you will have to go through. Yeah. And my thing is, I wish I knew during the first eight years uh -huh. that I was going through, or and when I went through perimenopause, I wish I knew some things. Yeah. Now there are one time there, I was perimenopausal. That was very that was like, because I'm like, you put it on like me, and whatever it takes, I will do. Mm -hmm. There are a couple of things I love. The first thing I love is my sleep. Because I work with sleeping. When I did my research, I understand that I did I was made to understand that any sleep issue also has to do with the central nervous system. Mm -hmm. So I went to a chiropractor mm -hmm. and it meant that, you know, some things with um, your nervous system was always um, also having some issues going on. Mm -hmm. And so I went to a chiropractor and I started, I didn't yeah. hear. Then, I did a function. Let me tell you something. I was desperate. <laughs> I was desperate. And that's why menopause and dialogue is here. <laughs> so let me tell you, when we look at all of these things that we can do for treatment, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes the females are at home and they're thinking about, okay, how can I start with something? And so the thing is this. There are a lot of therapies we're going to talk about. I promise you, this is a year long dialogue. Mm -hmm. But when we start to look at perimenopause in the beginning, we are just now sharing just some of the things you can do at home. Even when we talk about having those warm baths, essential oils, let it become your friend. Essential oils are oils that you can use in conjunction with any of the symptoms that are associated with perimenopause. And particularly, Patricia mentioned sleep. Um, Calming when you when you have those mood swings when you're feeling like irritable you have um, essential oils like chamomile yes yes, yes. yes. lavender yes. oil yes. yeah yes. <laughs> my sleep issues and here's some of the things I did with that. when because I was having heart palpitations in the night and my palpitations were really horrible mm -hmm. my heart would begin to beat like a drum. Then it would pop and slow down. And it would do a long blur whatever that was. Mm. And then it would stop. Then pop, 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 stop. I my heart did so many things. I love and it. it bop, 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 and stop. <laughs> my I know right. I know what I'm saying. My soul doesn't stop. My heart to the hospital and, and they yeah. had my heart. Let me tell you, it is real and it is 
scary because yes. when you don't know, you, um, you don't know. Now, one of the things is we can tell you, you know what, Patrice? I, I remember saying to her, Patrice, I remember her yeah, and I said, Patrice, my mom went through this. When Patrice started to explain to me, I said, how does it feel? She says, it feels like it's starting and it's soft. Um, it, it sounded familiar. Mm-hmm. And as many times I said, Patrice, it sounds like you're carrying menopause. She still had to go through the process of the doctor saying, listen, Patrice, you're not going to die. And, but so, I am just saying, I have to die when they check my arm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and one of the things, once I learned what about what was going on, mm-hmm. I did whisper. And let me tell you something about potassium and banana. Mm-hmm. For the food. Heart. Yeah. Food is another natural way to help yourself. Mm-hmm. I promise you. Banana world. Two, mm-hmm. three o'clock in the morning, I've got four and five and six bananas <laughs> eating it because my heart is going crazy. And I promise you, it worked. <laughs> what does Anthony say? Anthony says, Hello, ladies. I am Ernestine and Anthony Small. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate you. Mitzi Curry says, Hi. Hi, Mitzi. Hello. How are you doing? So we're continuing to talk about some of the things we can do at home. <laughs> to offset uh, perimenopause and the symptoms you start to experience. We talked about having a warm bath, adding in the extra salt, and also using a variety of essential oils. Also, let me tell you what was my go-to, massages. Mm. Listen to a sister. And particularly back, head, and shoulder massages because it is one of the most calming things. You know, I, I met a sister the other day and she to me, she said, Jay, listen, um, when it comes to massages, I don't have any money for you know things that are not necessary. Hold on, let me take my glasses off. Take care of yourself, sisters. Mm-hmm. Perimenopause has become a necessity. That's all I'm saying because I promise you, these, um, um, these therapies that we're talking about today they mm-hmm. work yes. a different making it really helping you cope. It's not like a coping. Method. It's more like a coping therapy because you're on this journey for a while, and this is why we're going on your long journey. Because when you start the symptom, things like going and getting a 30 minute uh, head, back, and shoulder massage make a difference. And I believe in energy therapy, I believe in the body giving you the opportunity to heal itself. And so, when you have that decline, looking at energy therapy is definitely one of the ways to go. But you can help yourself. And I, we got a, listen, we got a special show of persons that is going to be a part of partnering with us to help us with these services. So one of the first things you want to look at is get yourself, um, you know, find a way to just make it a, a, a meal of the week where you're getting a warm bath and invest in some really, really good essential oils. That's yes. one of the ways to do it. That's it. <laughs> And also during the secret, what I did, and I, I can pull, I can pull from my fishbowl of what I, know, I did. Right? <laughs> because nothing worse than nights upon nights. Oh, and I'm sleep, you just up, you're miserable, you're angry, and God, it's like, why is this happening to me? One of the things I learned to do was I had to learn to cut off all the lights. Hmm. I had to learn to, before I went to bed, no TV, I took the TV out of my home. Right. No lights whatsoever. Right. And no computer. Yeah. I stopped those at a certain time. Right. And when I did all of those things, mm-hmm. even when I had to lay in the dark, mm-hmm. that there, I had to learn even to reset my sleep. Sometimes I had to go to bed at 6 o'clock. Mm-hmm. I didn't even get five minutes worth of sleep until maybe like four o'clock in the morning. But when I wanted to be set, but mm-hmm. learning to go to bed consistently yeah. at an early time yeah. because our body is under our assault. Yeah. Learning to I like how <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I like how you talk about sharing the room because sometimes you don't think that, that can make a difference. It makes sense. Like yes. I said the a while tearing your body to tea the <laughs> So Patrice did a whole a whole collage of stuff. Okay, let's see what Missy is saying. Missy says I had it like that. 
well. And she thought what to do. Uh, oh, well, yes, I am going to die now. Wow. Okay, Missy. Okay, so you see that you're not alone. You're not um, so parents said, Hi, everyone. I am going to it as we speak now. And I am feeling so sick. Karen, I will go with you. Yeah. Listen, some of this advice you and I are talking about, Karen, because let me tell you something. These little small nuggets, they make a big difference. Even with preparing your room, giving yourself the opportunity to have a quiet space and time where there's even relaxing music. Because one of the things you have to do when you're going to prepare menopause is find a space or an environment where you can promote relaxation. That yeah. is super important because you're not just relaxing your body, but you're relaxing the mind. That is so, so important. What is Paulette saying? Paulette is saying, great show. Thank you, Paulette. Thank you. Thank you so much, ladies. Yes. I'm heading into another meeting with Tune In another time. Thank you so much, Paulette, for tuning in. We appreciate you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right, <laughs> We appreciate you, Jen. Yes. <laughs> yes, like this that you can do and perimenopause that phase you we need to learn how to keep it in hand yeah. and do what we can do there are foods that you were eating Shay, and that's another bio oh my goodness by yellow <laughs> foods that you're eating that can cause perimenopause to be even worse and i guess in another show because we're narrowing down the end of our show yeah we, we need, i'm trying to treat all this it's a yellow dialogue. And the fact is, you know that this is a new area for you. And we want to really go slow because we, we want to take it for granted that some of these things that Patrice and I now know that you know. And so there are a lot of things that Patrice is saying. And there are a lot of things that we are going to offer you to help you through yes. this journey. We're going to take it one step at a time because it's important that when you start is to recognize and get the tools, no matter how small they are, to help you to start to feel better. And one of the things Patrice and I both know is relaxation um, and taking the time to relax in the beginning of helping yourself with this very menopause journey. Buckle up, sis. Buckle up. It's a ride that you have to take. Yeah. And if you have to take it, you might as well do it the best way you can. Yeah. Do it yeah, you cannot. We're here. We have so much planned for you, so much information. So we want to say, listen, as we come to the close, sisters share. Mm -hmm. Let's take another sister's hand and share this. We are going to be on next week, Monday at 6 p.m. sharp. So we're inviting you to join us, tell another sister, mm -hmm. share the link. We are going to go live once again. Sisters, share. God bless you. We'll see you next week.